on there because every time we, like I said, the smart TVs or whatever crap that they have now, every time we try to talk about something, then automatically you start seeing like commercials or, or you know, like advertisement on a phone. As soon as you talk about it, I'm like, really? Yeah, and they claim that... Of course they listen because they have to listen to everything instead of doing their job to do something like productive. I don't know. Like, you know, stop people from swatting other people's houses. Yeah. It's like the government gets us in a really bad position. Mm -hmm. But welcome to the Lady Talk Sunday. This, I am your host. Lunatic Brody, and this is the most beautifulest co-host I could ask for. Oh. Lunatic Mom. Well, thank you. <laughs> I love our Sunday talks, but this Sunday is Easter. Yes. That's the most important time of the year. Right, and that's why we're doing it way early, so that way Sunday we can spend with our family. Right. Guess where I'm going on tomorrow? Oh, where? Cult Man's Brew. Then I'm dropping Roy off at his sister's house, and I'm coming home, spending Saturday with my mommy, because she's down here. And oh, okay. And she, uh, going to do some things for Easter with her. And then Sunday, I have to go up to uh, Greenville and pick up Roy Dale. Oh, okay. So you're going to be busy. Mm -hmm. What are you doing for Easter? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, normally when the kids were younger, we did a lot. Now we don't do it because they all their own lives and their own times. But usually we make breakfast in the morning and then we have dinner afternoon. And that's it. Do you do Easter egg hunts? When, when they were little, yeah, we did. But it's like just because of where we are and when we grow up that it's like, oh, these kids doing this, these kids doing that. Because I don't, I didn't teach my kids that like Easter or Christmas is about Santa Claus and Easter is about Easter Bunny. No, that's none of that happening. Right. I, I, I feel that at a, up to a certain age or, and let me put this in there, or if said child or adult child has special needs, mm -hmm. up to a certain age and children like that should have an Easter egg hunt the fun of it and it keeps their mind thinking well that's what i'm saying like this is just for like fun because like for the right. kids so then they can participate in something but as a we are a family we we never did for the kids like to have uh done at home mm -hmm. they always knew what easter is about because the easter easter saturday we prepare a basket that it's all the food that you're going to eat for breakfast on an Easter Sunday. Then we prepare that and we go to church and have it blessed. And every single of the foods are meaning of it leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus and ro Jesus rose again and everything else. So all, all of that is a meaningful to us. So that's why we didn't do that. But if we went, we were invited somewhere then we did let our kids participate right. but it wasn't like to make I, I guess i don't know to make it that it would be kind of traditional thing we didn't do that so our tradition was meaningful to the observation right um my family we always did an easter egg hunt my mom and dad both tried to teach us the meaning of Christmas or Easter and that it was more about Jesus and about spending time with your family mm -hmm. than it was about the Easter egg hunt. Um, mm -hmm. 
But my dad always did an Easter egg hunt for us because at the end of the day, we got to work together as a team because we do clues. Yes. I'm going to show you something. Just give me one second. I'm going to show you something. Ooh, I can't wait. This is like an Easter egg, but that's a candle. That's cute. That's a candle. So that, and this is an Easter bunny. That's a candle too. But for our observation, which is lamb, that's what it is, a chocolate. And this is pure sugar. So that's what our children grow up only having as a Easter. And then we had like the Cadbury eggs, like the yeah. chocolate Cadbury eggs. So this was all put in the little basket and then the Cadbury eggs. That's what our children's Easter basket was. I like those. Yeah. So are you going to, uh, I know your grandson's coming. Are you going to change? Uh, are you going to do Easter egg hunts for your grandchild? Well, I'm sure that because, see, like, Megan's mom, they did all that. Right. So I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to do it. But I'm going to also introduce what we do. Right. So that's going to be known for both sides. I like that idea. Well, that's how it's, I feel like instead of like, I don't like when people pushing on others, like their beliefs or their traditions or, oh, that's always been down that way. Da, 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 da. I don't like that because I do have my own thing and I can strictly say, no, I'm not doing this because that's how I had it in this and that. Right. But I know where I live <laughs> and I know what I'm exposed to and I do compromise right. so i do make sure that i make my kids and everything else i always told them what it's about and everything else but then also i've never stopped them if they were in, invited to their friend's house or we went to some other people's like we were invited i didn't discourage them or i didn't tell them that oh this is not right and this shouldn't be done blah, blah, blah. Right. because but kyle I yes make their own choice and how much they participate but first like i said we always make sure that we let them know that this is what we are and what our traditions is so they should also keep that in mind right. instead of completely dismiss it too like kyle had a friend when he was like on first or second grade he had a friend and they were yeah our witnesses and um the lady, when she found out that we are Catholics and everything else and how we celebrate and this and that, one time she invited me to have a conversation to McDonald's and she told me to bring my Bible. And she brought hers. And I told her, I said, okay, so let's see what is it that you're trying to accomplish here because I am not pushing my child is not pushing nothing on your child. They just friends at school. They just playing playful and I do let them be. But unfortunately I would like to see what you have anything against it. And I would like to see what it says in your Bible and what it says in mine. And she was shocked. And after that, she never want to talk to me again <laughs> because in Bible it's basically everything the same. If we all going to follow the Bible, 
we all going to believe in the same thing. Exactly. But if people are going to start modifying, changing things to their needs, to their likening, then no, nobody's agreeing with it and everybody's separating. Yeah. And that's what I don't like. Here's, here, here, here's my thing with that Bible. You look at a Bible for Christianity. Mm -hmm. And you look at a Bible for Jehovah Witnesses. Mm -hmm. And you look at a Bible for Jewish. A Jewish Bible. Mm -hmm. They all basically say the same goddamn thing. There's just different parts where it was changed for different things. Which is was just a little bit different or observation and everything else. Right. So, but it's the same thing. So why to press on? No, my thing is better than yours and my thing is right. I, no, 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 no. What it says in the Bible and how you translate it to your own self and how you want it to follow it and observe it and whatever you want to do then it's up to you and nobody should judge you for it well, exactly. but don't push it on me that, that, okay so like you know i don't follow strict catholic way i don't follow mm -hmm. strict pagan way mm -hmm. i don't follow strict any belief way but i do believe in god i do right. believe in the universe which is the pagan mm -hmm. I believe that you have to go through universal judgment and pay for the sins you did while you're on lock, while you're alive. Mm -hmm. Just because somebody dumped you in Jesus juice doesn't mean that you can run around and commit Harry Carey and be like, well, I was saved by God. Mm -hmm. You have to answer to the sins that you created. Right. So, you never hear me say my religion is better than anybody else's because I fully 100% believe that they're in two different religions put together. We all believe in the same thing. Yeah. There is a higher power up there. Mm -hmm. And whatever you call it, whatever you want to name it, whatever you wanted to observe it, that it's your choice. But we all believe in higher power. So why to constantly judging someone or making someone feel guilty about this and that, oh, no, that you shouldn't be doing that because that's how it is. And this is the right thing. And this is that. No, 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 no. You don't know what right and wrong is. The right and wrong is don't do stupid shit and don't kill someone. That's the wrong thing. And then don't try to justify. I went to church. No, don't do that. Mm-hmm. I think that's all it's put said. I always tell our kids like this. Basically, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. Right, which is basically that's what it is. And I always tell our kids, if I walked in the garage, it doesn't make me I'm a mechanic. Right. So if I walk in the church, it doesn't make me that I'm saint. But I have my own personal needs that for my spiritual thing what i feel is right that it makes me feel better so i do what it makes me feel better not that what everybody else is going to look at it and say oh you're doing this wrong right and i do believe in everything whatever it is and i follow because like i said i have been raised in a strict catholic and everything else but when i came here i actually i questioned it myself like, why is it here different if we supposed to follow the same Bible? Right. I, I, I totally 100% get that. Person get that. Um, and that's why I said a lot of people that, oh, I go to church or, and I'm not talking to everyone. Nobody get your panties in. Twat. I said a lot of people. I go to church. I'm better than you. Right. I go to. I was dunked in Jesus juice, 
And before I died, I asked him to forgive all my sins. Mm-hmm. But yet, they've made everybody's life miserable while they were on the planet, you know? Right, which is, that's what I'm saying, like, live by example, and if you wanted to be a good person, and you want to show that you shouldn't be judged by what you believe and how you believe, be a good person, don't judge others, because you will be judged in the end, so it's like, why is it that you have to be better than me? <laughs> there are some those religious ones that go to church every Sunday, go to church every Wednesday, you know, really go to church. You know those all oh, the older women that do that. They're really you should believe in God. You should be doing this. Your body's a temple. Don't be tattooing yourself. My grandma, not one of them. She hated tattoos. absolutely hated them. She goes, that's your body. That's your choice. You have to wear that, not me. Mm -hmm. My grandma did not believe in other religions besides hers. That's your belief. I'm not going to put you down because of your belief. Mm -hmm. I will ask you why that's your belief. Right. She would go to help anyone that needed the help i could call her up at two o'clock in the morning grandma i need to come home he's beating me how much do you need it's gonna cost me about a thousand dollars i'm on it it's on its way go to walmart get the money get home that's at three o'clock in the morning Right, which is, that's why it doesn't, uh, religion doesn't make a person. Because you can be religious and you can believe this, but you can be so cruel to others that your religion now is canceled. Mm -hmm. Because no religion ever that I've ever heard from anyone that I have accounted for, that it says that you have to hate or judge people. None of the religions say that. One, a matter of fact, all religions say that you should love thy neighbor. Love one another. It always says, well, love one another. But what it is, is it's, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this one up because I, I know for a fact it is this. You have your upper class hundreds in the, or thousands and thousands in the bank, right? Mm -hmm. They go to church, I'm better than all you. Why? Because they got more money. Right. You got your mid class. You, my grandma. Mm -hmm. Mid class people. They want to help other people. Right. They want to work towards being a good person, you know. Work towards building people up. Mm -hmm. Helping out the poor. You got the poor. We'll give you your sh the shirt off your back. Mm -hmm. You got the homeless. Which will help more than... Than anyone out there. Yeah. Because they don't want to see people in the situation they're in. Right. If we made... The filthy rich people, poor for a week, freeze mm -hmm. their bank accounts, All right. lock their house, they can't get in, they're out on the street. It would change who they were. Right. But that never happens because money can get me out of it. Money can't get you out of being a shitty person. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to atone to your sins. Like I always try to kind of bring it up with my great aunt taught us when we were little. 
she said money we have to have money because that's what that's what it's man made that that's a to go about to make sure that you just get stuff that you need so then it's kind of exchange things for trading things yep. that's what the money's for but money is not going to get you anything and she always especially around easter she always brought up judas that he sold jesus for 30 shillings and when which was a lot of money but he said she always yeah she always told us think about it when he did sell jesus did it make him happy after he's seen that they arrest him, they crucify him and everything else? What did he do? He threw all the money onto the street and he went and hung himself. Mm -hmm. Did it make him happy? Money cannot buy you happiness. Yes. Money. So many rich guys out there and females. I'm yeah. Both both because you know sometimes and i feel sometimes in a way that um because i actually have came across a very good person that i worked for that he really helped me a lot like my family like our family because i was able to bring four of my youngest kids to work with me and i would have had to pay either for daycare or i would have to quit my job to be able to stay home with them. Right. So he was very, very understanding and he had money, he had everything, he had businesses and he had everything, but he never looked at it that way that he's better than anyone. He never did. And that's what kind of made me believe that there is good people out there, even if they have money. Because he always, and especially like when it would Easter come around or Christmas, he would specifically, like he would give me bonuses as for me as a worker. But then he would always give extra money. And he said, now go buy these children something nice so they can have a nice toy, nice clothes, nice shoes, something. You got to do that. And then he would kind of always told me that I will ask them because you're going to bring them over here. So I'll ask them what would you do with the money? <laughs> And I'm like, I do buy it. And I do tell them that you gave it to them. And even Lawrence, till this day, he remembers him. Because like Kyle, Lawrence, Matthew, and Steven, they've had, they have ADHD. So you have to kind of pay attention what they eat, what kind of a foods they eat. Not too much sugar, not color, food, not nothing, whatever. Because then it makes them hyper. But he would always bring a blueberry muffin and, <laughs> and he gave it to Lawrence every morning. I'm like, I told you not to give him the sugar. He's like, leave the kid alone. You need something good in life. So this is a beginning of a day. So it makes you happy because it's something nice and sweet and good. So leave the kid alone. And he always brought him the muffin. And Lawrence, to this day, he remembers. You remember how your boss gave me muffins and you always mad at me because then he's all sugared up? Right. <laughs> yeah. See, there are good, wealthy people. There are. I'm not gonna there is. Every no, there is. But, bad, but there, a lot of people who are wealthy, get uh, their name gets ruined because of the wealthy people that are... Ew, don't touch me. Right. The the greedy ones. Like right. that. Oh, I'm better than you. And what made you better than me? Well, see, and Roy and I were talking one day. And he goes, you will never see a poor man rich. But you will never see a rich man rich. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean by that? He goes, you will never see a poor man rich because they're always giving their money out to help other people. Give it away. Yes. No matter what they have, either money or any anything, like, you know, they always give it away. Right. But you'll never see a rich man rich because they can never truly find the happiness in life. Right. Because they oh, never I have. I got a car or I got all these fancy cars. I got this fancy I got car. this and that, yeah. We go to here, 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 here. Vacations, here. yeah. But at the end of the day, 
husband don't want to be near them. Kids don't yeah. want them. Don't want to be near the parents. Yep. Yeah. Because they're constantly fighting. So they never really have a happiness. Which uh -huh. is, ask any poor man, cash value poor man, how rich they are. I'm pretty fucking rich. I, got, I have a house over my head. And, yep, I have a family that I care about and then everything and, and everybody's healthy. Mm -hmm. Yes, and everyone is healthy. That's what, to me, Rich is. Exactly, minus Coco and Tom Tom. Because... Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, Coco. Here you go. Yeah, like sometimes, like when Kaya was younger and everything else, like, you know, kids are cruel at school and they make fun of and like, number one, automatically all the kids in here that soon as they found out that we have eight kids, then then automatically they oh, you guys are poor. And they would come home like, you know, the younger kids, like, you know, the kids make fun of us. And I'm like, why? What do they do? Well, they say we are poor. I'm like, are you? Think about it. How many kids we have at home? And what do you guys have? For your birthdays, every one of you, whatever you guys want, you get. Every day you have nice clothes and shoes. And even if you see that the kids have something, oh, I like this shoes because this kid have it. Okay, let's go. We get it and this and that. Right. You guys always had everything what these other kids did. Exactly. But what do we have? We have a family. Exactly. We have a family. We are rich that we are right here all together. And no matter what, if one is said, another one is said, how can I help you? How can I do this? How can I do that? We all always together. That's who, who are. We are rich because we are family. See, now, it's not about money. I find that some people who have everything still don't have everything because their kids don't want to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Their significant other wants nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. Just knows damn well he'd have to pay her anyway, so might as well do right. with her. Yeah. Goes and cheats, has affairs, the whole nine years. Right. Those people... Could not be happy. No. Nope. And what makes a person miserable is themselves. They're not happy with themselves. Right. I always say you have to love yourself first before you can love anyone else. Exactly. Now me, I always I love myself, mom. 100 That's love good. Myself. That's good. Do I pick on myself? Hell yeah. Well, because we all do. We want better. We want more. I want, you know, I want yeah. to go get dental work. Yeah. That's going to be a pretty penny. I want to go get, I want to go get, you know, all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, I can't afford it. Right. I'm not mad at it. It is what it is. Right, because that's the next time, next day, it might be there and it might happen and everything else. So it's like, it's again, something that, you know, you not, you cannot ever kind of put yourself down that for that reason that, oh, I don't have this or I don't have that. I always look at it as long as I am healthy enough that I would be able to make it, then I'm all good. Right. So, like, in times get tough, we all have situations where we're like, fuck, how are we going to make it through this week? Right. But at the end of the day, I have friends and family that love me enough to help me. Right. Which is, that's what I always look at it. Like, things can be done as long as I can wake up tomorrow, I'm okay with it. And I can figure out how can I make it to the next day and the next day. It's always like, with me, it's always the struggle because, like I said, even though I haven't worked that many years, I still feel guilty that I don't work and everything else. And it's just, that's the my own thing that I'm living with. And it's not that I, like, 
like I'm able to because again, sometimes I have to talk to myself about it and say, if you're going to go to work eight hours, how are you going to be able to make it? You cannot make three hours to do anything. How are you going to make eight? Right. So then it's like, I have to kind of convince myself that it's not because I don't want to, but because I can't. Exactly. So it's like, it's, but it's still hard. It's still hard. So it's just like, I'm trying to kind of look at it from my point of view, like, oh, how can I contribute to the household? How can I contribute to this? Maybe if I work, maybe it would be a little bit better, or maybe I would be able to do that. But that's not the case. It's not always the case. Exactly. So it's just, it's just all the mental situation that how you handle yourself first before you're going to put everything out there. Exactly. So. And, and that's with me. Like, I hear a lot of people, oh, well, you're going to Golden Man Bridge. You go here, you go there, you can go work at an eight-hour job. My daughter would have to help me out of the car after three hours on my feet. Mm-hmm. Because I couldn't walk on my own feet. And I did yeah. it every day. Right. Five days a week I did it. So three hours a day. And I would lay in bed, cry and scream because of the muscle spasms and the muscle mm -hmm. aches. And it's like, oh, what kind of life is that? For me to go to work and come home and not be able to walk, come right. home and not be able to, you know, go out and do things. I go out and do things, but if you ever notice, um, when they're like on a hiking trail or it's a very long distance, I don't do it. I know my limitations, and I don't do it. Who do I send to do it? Roy and Jordan. They go do it. They videotape. They record. Right. Why? Because at the end of the day, I know my limitations. I'm not going to push my limitations just to go make a video. Now, tomorrow is going to push my limitations. I have enough IV probe in 800 to ch choke slam a horse. And I'll be taking the IV probe in 800 because it's a Three hour car drive there. Mm -hmm. It's a nice long walk to the Goatman's Bridge. Right. No place to sit down. No easy way to get down the embankment just so that way we can get underneath the Goatman's Bridge. Right. That all is going to fall on to Roy and Jordan to get down there and get the footage from down there. Right. I'll do up top, but then it's a three and a half hour drive home. Right. Why is it longer to get there or get home than to get there? Because I got to drop Roy off. Yeah. But it's some place I've wanted to go since I first seen um, some of my friends go. Oh, okay. Yeah, one time someone asked me, why am I on disability? And I told the person, I said, okay, if I was in the wheelchair, would you ask me the same question? Well, no, because it's a physical disease. That they because, see. no, because it's, I told him, I said, because it's a visual. You don't know what's going on in my body. You don't know how much I go through every day. But because I'm standing on my own feet and nothing is broken, I'm not laying in the bed and with the tubes and everything else, then I shouldn't be on a disability that I, like, I can help it. Right. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. You automatically judgment because you don't know what people go through or how they are, whatever it is. Because as long as you don't see the visual that it's nothing broken, nothing this, nothing that, then there is no need for it. Well, that's like, but there is other things. That's like my mama. She's got multiple sclerosis. Yeah. Now, did she, did she get an inheritance? Yes. But she's still on disability. Uh, the inheritance went, uh, it didn't go to her. 
but it went to her, if that makes sense. Right. There was a payee to take care of her, anything she needs. Mm -hmm. Because she has multiple sclerosis. There's days I see her try to write, and this is all you get. Right. She can't hold the pen. She can't hold the pencil. There's days she can't even hold her own neck up. Yeah. But she's out there doing things, and people are like, well, your mom's not on disability. Or she, your mom's not disabled. Do you know the pain and suffering that woman goes through? Right, what she goes through. You don't know that. You're not in her body. You don't know how she feels. Exactly. And that's why people judge very judgmental, automatically, very judgmental. And that's the one thing that it kind of bothers me. Where instead of have a little bit more compassion and get to know the person first before you judge. Right. Instead of automatically, the first thing is the judgment. And then like, oh, I didn't know. Well, you should have asked. And some, some of that shit ain't anybody's business. I'm sorry. If I'm, let's say, I, I, me and you meet for the first time, I'm not going to be like, oh, are you on disability? That ain't, that, no. Right, which is, I mean, like I said, you know, people think, like, because I try to do everything for myself because I don't like that. People would have to take care of me. So when I do things and everything else, even around the house, the kid's like, mom, let me do this. Mom, let me do it. I'm like, just leave me alone. If I am not able to, I'll ask. Right. But just let me do something. Exactly. So that's what, that's what it's like. It's just so like stressful because, again, I try to do things and then I get hard on myself because I'm stressed out because normally like see my brain tells me that i'm able to do that my, my body said yeah you forgot the body like 10 years ago it was out there somewhere <laughs> you forgot the body back about yeah back, back there that, you, know, the you just somewhere. yeah you you left them somewhere out there so it's just one of those things because they even like like sometimes they make fun of me because like when we go outside, I like to do things around the yard and everything else and around the flowers and all this and that. And then when I come inside and I sit down and they uh, can see it, how it makes me feel because I'm in so much pain already. And they like, okay, so now we cannot talk to mom five to 10 business days because she's out of commission. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, you all make fun of me. Great. No, but they like, no, because, you know, then after that, I can even like when I sit down, especially when I sit down, when I try to get up and walk, I'm like a robot, like, hey, like a small motion, like my legs. And it, yeah. So I start I'm walking. Tom Tom has to help me up some days. It's like, oh. Yeah. But they like my mom. Uh, now my mom's out of commission, five to ten business days. So, <laughs> yeah, my son, he's like, Mom, you're always online. It's like, Well, yeah, I'm grinding, you know, I'm trying to do what I want to do. And he goes, Yeah, but I go, Don't even finish that sentence. How many times yeah. do we go to the park just so you can play? How many times do we go on hikes? just so you can go on a hike with the family. Right. I do what I can, as much as I can, and then I'm down and out for three days. Then you get mad because I'm literally in my room hiding away from everybody because, oh, wait, I'm in pain again, and dogs jump. Right. And then you get mad because I'm not out there talking to you about the same thing you want to talk to me eight million times about. Right. I already know. You've explained it to me. Can we yeah. find something new to discuss? Because at this point in time, I'm getting bored with the conversation. 
All right. Which is, that's what I'm saying, like, you know, but people, sometimes, you know, people, they don't understand how, how it is. And that's the only thing, like, sometimes I have a problem that people are very judgmental automatically. Or like when people see me, like when I cannot walk properly because I barely can walk, my knees hurt, my ankles hurt and everything. So then they look at me like, you're not that old. What is, what is your problem? Why you walk like that? Great. It's called arthritis and fibromyalgia. And that's oh, why my, and I, I sometimes I say, well, I didn't stop at the Jiffy Loop to get my knees <laughs> lubricated. Oh, <laughs> because honestly, you know, like how are you going to judge someone like, you know, like automatically, oh, you're not that old. So what is your problem? Why do you walk like that? Great. My grandma would get down and she'd be gardening. Well, she had like this bench in front of where she was gardening so that way she could get herself back up. Cause, right. I mean, at the end of the day, she was older and she goes, Oh, Tanya, I need the oil can. I'd run and get it. She goes, uh, I don't think it's working. I'm like, Ma, Grandma, you cannot oil your knees. <laughs> Yep, that's how I sometimes feel. Yep, that's how I feel sometimes. And it's just so aggravating because then, like, my knees don't want to move and my ankles, like, give in that sometimes I'm like, oh, my gosh, now I'm going to fall on my face. Right. So it's like, it's just so stressful. So That, that, that is a major part. All right. I'm going to end it here because we've been talking for 41 minutes. Do you have oh, okay. anything, anything you would love to tell the beautiful people? Well, I just want to wish them very happy Easter, whatever they celebrate, however they celebrate, and enjoy your time with your family because that's the most important thing. And enjoy the beautiful day outside. And thank you for talking to me. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our lovely conversation. We never stay on one topic because we don't do that. We talk about multiple different things and we get everything off of our chest. We love y'all and we hope you have an amazing Easter. Love y'all. Bye. Bye.